Okay, so right off the bat, I'm going to apologize because we thought if we went back and forth, it would be more interesting. <laughs> so I have the first four, so it's going to go like one, five, two, six, three, seven. Okay, just to get that right out of the way. Uh, so first we have the early 20th century American, the bungalow type. And characteristics of the bungalow was it had an open floor plan. Occasionally it was two floors, but most of the time it was only one. And then a uh, low-pitched um, roof, hipped or gabled. Um, front, big front porches uh, covered by a roof. And then a large fireplace. And then the bungalow was first used in 1905 in California, becoming the most popular house design till about the 30s. And uh, it was designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. Uh, location, it was um, there in the U.S., mostly in New England and California. A little weird, they're a little spread out there. <laughs> and then likes and dislikes, very simple, easy to build, but it was pretty small. Uh, the early 20th century American California bungalow. So it's kind of like the bungalow, but it's just it's more California based. Um, it's usually one to one and a half stories, so it usually was one and a half stories, so there's like an attic on the top. Uh, they had a partial width on porches, like that's kind of a bad example in the picture because it goes all, all the way across, but usually it was like the front, just like the middle part of the house. Um, it was integrated with the earth, it used like natural colors so like browns and there's usually wood and, and like brick. Uh, usually when you walk into the room there was a living room and then there's usually a separate dining room and then a smaller kitchen. And the focal point of the living room was a fireplace, so the first thing you saw when you walked in the room was the fireplace. It had sloping roofs with eaves, wood shingles, and a chimney. The chimney is usually built out of stone. Um, it was inexpensive and local. Um, it was built in 1890 by Arthur Page Brown, and it was popularized until 1920. Uh, it was the first, it was originally from the Indian province of Bengal, and it gets its name from the Hindi word Banglai, which means house. Um, it was adapted by the British and they were used as like summer retreats and um, uh, houses for administrators. They were perfect for the lower middle class uh, because they were cheap and people started to move into cities and it, they were mail order free cut homes. So like the, the wood was cut perfectly to what it would be and they just had to kind of assemble it like a puzzle. I uh, like that it's cheap, um, it's integrated with the earth, it makes it seem more natural. Um, I like that it's good privacy, and it's usually, it's like a one, or, so it's plain, and, it's, and I don't like that it's plain, and I don't like that it's a smaller house. And then I put it was one and a half stories in likes and dislikes, because like it could be, there's benefits to both, I guess, so you can like, like, like change the house more because it's one story, but then there's not as much space. It's located in older American cities, like all across, so in Denver, you'll see some. Uh, but they're mainly in California, and they're also in New Zealand and Australia because of, like, Hollywood movies and the use of them there. And then next we have the Prairie House. Um, characteristics of the Prairie House is it's typically only one level, has a brick or stucco exterior. Um... They have interior wood banding. Um, they have an asymmetric wood plan or floor plan, and then they're short and very wide. And then history. It was made around the nineteen around nineteen hundred. It was made by a group of arch architects, including F Frank Lloyd Wright. Again, <laughs> um, originally seen in Chicago. And when designing, the architects focused on keeping it simple and making it blend in with nature. Uh, location, it, since it was originally made in Chicago, 
you could find it in the Midwest most of the time, and especially Illinois and Wisconsin. And then likes and dislikes. Um, I like that it blends with nature and has a lot of windows for good views, but I don't like that it takes up a lot of land, so it might cost a little more. And then next we have the shopping house. I just wanted to point out like that middle house <laughs> is where Elvis was born. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the very narrow. Uh, there the rooms are arranged behind one another. There's no halls. There's a fireplace in each room, but usually they share fireplaces except for the kitchen. Uh, it was raised two or three feet above the ground because of a lot of flooding that happened. They were based in the south, so uh, they're made out of wood. Uh, they had flat roofs, but like after I think 1880, they started using sloped roofs. Um, they're, and they're built really close to the street. Um, it was it was built just after the end of the Civil War, uh, until the 1920s. So so a lot of people thought that the name was from like you could shoot a shotgun and go out the back, but the others believed that it came from like uh, African and uh, Indian. They said from influence there, and they like mixed up a word from their cultures that sounded like shotgun. Ten uh, percent of like in southern cities, especially like Atlanta, you'll see a lot of these that actually made up ten percent of housing stock in those cities, which is a lot. Um, after the Great Depression, people like stopped couldn't really afford them anymore, and so they kind of just stopped producing them. Uh, they were built, and originally they were built for rent only, so like, they were built near factories and they could, you could rent a house and stay there for a couple months and leave, but people started owning them as time went on. I like that it's cheap, and it, the south is really hot, so there's a lot of good airflow, which was useful. I don't really like that it's very small, like, there's not usually even a bathroom, and there's like no backyard or front yard, and there's, yeah, there's no bathroom. You will find them in the south, and then they're also in Cuba. Um, and then next we have <clears throat> Pueblo Adobe. Um, characteristics are typically stucco. The edges are pretty round, and the roofs are flat. But the for decoration, they often come with wood beams coming out uh, level with the roof line just for decoration, and then most of the time they are sand colored just to match the background. And then history, adobe houses, uh, Pueblo style, are also known as the Pueblo Revival, um, which is, the goal of them was to combine the look of Spanish colonial west and Native American houses. Um, mainly Pueblo and Hopi, and um, it was first used in the 1890s when Albert Cicero, I'm not going to try that last name, um, used Pueblo's architecture, style, and multiple houses in California. And then location, it's very common around the southwest, mainly in New Mexico and surprisingly Florida. And likes and dislikes, it fits very well with its uh, setting and has lots of plants to make up for the lack of color, usually. And um, it doesn't really fit in with any other setting other than like a desert. And it has pretty limited creativity. And the four square house. Uh, it, it, it was originally it used on his woodwork, so like it wasn't really pre mail order pre cut. Um, it has a boxy design, uh, like even sides. It was usually two and a half stories, and there was a basement, which was actually not that common back then. Uh, each each floor had four square rooms, so the first floor was like the kitchen, the living room, an entry room, and then a bathroom, I think. And then the top floor was all the bedrooms and uh, and now the bathroom. Uh, there's typically a center dormer, which is, I, I think it's like the little window that pops off the top of the roof. 
Usually there is sometimes four of them, sometimes one of them, sometimes three of them. Like they have three different. Um, there was a large front porch and had a pyramid roof. Um, they were built from the mid 1890s to the late 1930s. Um, first built in the Midwest, it wasn't really like a particular spot, but just that region, I guess. It incorporated Victorian and prairie elements, and uh, after I think in like early 1900s, like Lloyd, and or designed his own, pretty much made it op made more open in the in like the first floor, and like there wasn't as much like square rooms. And then after like 1910, all architecture really much doing that. Um, and then once once it got really popular, they started doing more. Um, I like that there's lots of space, and that there's two stories, and then the basement allowed for like a furnace and a boiler room, which has brought a lot of benefits back, back then. And then it's also, but like it's plain, like when I think of house, it's kind of what I think of. Uh, you'll find them in urban neighborhoods, uh, and they come, they kind of spread out like the edge of the cities to like suburban areas, um, and then they're in the Midwest. Um, next we have international style. I'll let you flip to your pages. <laughs> um, characteristics are thin planes to optimize space. So just like thin walls and stuff. And they have large windows and a flat roof with a visible steel frame. Uh, history. Um, they were made in Chicago by Ludwig Mays van der Rohe, uh, professor and architect. Uh, he was part of the making of the international style. He continued to make many more buildings in the style through to the 60s. Uh, location, it, international style buildings are found all over the globe in urban sitting cities and neighborhoods. Um, likes and dislikes, it's very practical, great for tall office buildings, but it's very plain. Uh, then the Art Deco, Art Modern, uh, this is not more houses, it's more like office buildings and stuff. Uh, Empire State Building, this isn't a good example of one, that's on the left. Um, it's characteristic, so it has clean lines, it's a rectangular, it's rectangular usually, um, it uses like mineral materials, so like mirrors and, and like glass blocks and stuff like that. And like the, yeah, it was also, it used, it, one of the main things about it though is that it used applied decoration, so like each house was a little different and like uh, statues on the roof and carved in stuff on the sides, stuff like that. Uh, but so there's the art modern and the art deco. The art deco was the traditional style. style. It was more vertical. Uh, the one on the left, the picture on the left, is a good is an example of one. It had angular corners, so like 90 degrees, uh, and it used like the surface ornamentation, so like the carving in of wood and paint and stuff like that, to make cool designs. And then it was usually public and commercial buildings. Uh, uh, the art modern was more recent and before World War II, and uh, it was like the more advanced designs of the deco style. It was more horizontal, they had rounded corners, um, little surface, like they didn't really carve in anything or have statues, and there's smooth walls. Uh, there are more bus stations and airport terminals, so like transportation stuff. Um, it, it was first built in Paris. Uh, it, it was the first time concrete, had, or reinforced concrete, was used in a residential building. Uh, it spread all throughout the United States and Europe, partly because of World War I, and like them getting to see all the architecture in other countries. And then it, it used a lot of different styles, so like in LA they used this style with Spanish stuff, Greek stuff, and stuff like that. And it was also used in engineering projects, so like the towers on the Golden Gate Bridge are actually this style. And it, it quickly became an international style. Um, I like that each building is unique, um, and that it inherits different aspects of different styles. But I don't really like that it's rectangular, and that, and that like, and some of the designs like traditional are, I don't really like, like the statues on the roof. I just, it's not good. 
Uh, you can find them all over the world. Yeah. <laughs>